Guess what? I am back in East Los Angeles with my friend Felice. Welcome back. And because you asked for it, she is going to make gnocchi. That's right. And if we're lucky, we're going to have a garden fresh salad with some fresh lemon dressing. Mwah. <laughs> so stay tuned. Making gnocchi is a dusty enterprise. If you want light, fluffy, mouth-watering gnocchi, it is crucial to use nice, warm potatoes. Okay, so I cooked my potatoes. They cooked in their skins for about 40 minutes, and then I drained them, and I let them cool just a tiny bit so that you can handle them, but they're still very warm. And they're pretty easy to peel at this point. Gnocchi, the word gnocchi, comes from nocca or gnocchi, which means knuckle in Italian. It's northern Italian food. A lot of potatoes grown in northern Italy as well as corn. And so potatoes have to be nice and warm. Why? Because the starches in the potatoes are still kind of happy and dancing around and all jazzy and active while the potatoes are warm. If you let them cool down, the starches are going to get tight and, well, starchy. So they're going to get all gummy and gooey, and we don't want that. We don't want gummy and gooey potatoes in our gnocchi. We want them light and fluffy and airy. So that's why we need to peel them and grate them while they're still warm and dancing around inside. There's a couple of ways you can grate your potatoes. You can use this gizmo. It's kind of like a potato ricer. And I have a ricer. It's, it's a French gizmo that basically grinds them. Or you can just use a regular good old grater. It never fails on this smallish side here and you just grab your potatoes and just grate away. Now as you're grating you can see there's these little chunks of potato that fall off on the side. Try to be mindful and pick them up because we don't want lumpy gnocchi. We want everything to go through the grater. All right, so we're just about done. Okay. Okay, so this is what roughly two pounds of potatoes looks like. It's about four large potatoes or six small to medium sized potatoes. Okay, so this is my little secret ingredients for my gnocchi. It's Russian farmer cheese. Now, you guys may not have access to it. You can use a little bit of ricotta cheese, which is absolutely fine. But this cheese, I'm using about a half a cup, is going to make your gnocchi extra fluffy and add a little tang to your gnocchi. And that's how my mom used to make it. So it has to go into my gnocchi, of course. We're, we're making a little well here in our potatoes that are still warm and fluffy. I'm going to whisk two eggs and add them in. Two cups of flour and I use double zero it's Italian flour that's usually used for pasta. And, and the double zero just means? It just means it, it's, it's half uh, coarse, half fine flour. It's, it's very similar to all-purpose flour, but it's, it's milled in Italy. It comes out silkier than regular all-purpose flour, and it makes your pasta nice and chewy. And then we'll add our wonderful 
Russian farmer cheese. Again, ricotta is fine, which is what Italians use, but I didn't grow up in Italy, so I'm using Russian farmer cheese. So, and now it's time to get your hands dirty. Make sure your nails are trimmed because you don't want to be getting dough out of your nails for, for days. And we just very gently and delicately, gingerly start folding our dough. Did I see you put some salt in there? Yes, two heaping teaspoons. Okay. Now make sure everything is incorporated and mixed well before you start kneading the dough. Okay. Can add a little bit of flour. And this double zero flour is so nice and fine that you don't need to sift it. Just be very gradual with flour. You don't want to put too much because then they will be tough. When the crumbs start kind of rolling off your fingers, that's the sign that the dough is forming. Okay. To get your dough going, you flour your kneading surface. It could be your countertop if it's made of a stone like a granite or marble, or you can use butcher block, whatever you use for kneading dough in your kitchen. Knead it for about two minutes, no more. You don't want too much gluten in your dough because it's going to make it too tough and not like a cloud at all. All right, so it's pretty much done. Still nice and airy and warm. We're going to kind of turn it into a loaf. Slice it like so. It's about eight slices. And now we're going to take them one by one. Roll them in flour a little bit. And you're going to make little snakes out of them. About half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. And so then you start cutting gnocchi that are about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. So they're like square little pillows. In Italy, there's a little wooden slatted board that they use and they kind of roll the gnocchi on it and it puts little divots in it to make it kind of look like a little knuckle so that when you smother it in, in sauce, it will hold, the texture will hold the sauce better. Now, you can use a fork to shape them. I'm gonna do it the way my mom used to do it, put it between my index and middle finger here and just hold it like this and put my index finger from my right hand in the middle and you have a little shaped kind of like this cute little gnocchi and that way the sauce can go and be cradled in this little trough. My mom used to call them lazy dumplings and the reason she called them lazy is because normally dumplings are stuffed so you make the dough you roll out the dough you put the filling in it you shape the dumplings nicely and we skip all of that here it's a shortcut 
not much of a shortcut. It's taking a long time to make them, but lazy dumplings they are, I guess. So whatever amount of dough you make, you have to use it up and shape your gnocchi right away because if you refrigerate this, all the starches will congeal and then you're gonna have a globby mess on your hand. You will not be able to shape your gnocchi afterwards. You can freeze your gnocchi once they're shaped. You can keep them for weeks in the freezer, but you cannot refrigerate the dough. They're actually very cute. Now we're gonna make a quick yummy dressing for our garden salad. So I'm zesting one of my lemons fresh off the tree. And when you zest, don't over zest it. You don't want to zest any of the white pulp because it's bitter. It's the zest that makes the lemon actually lemony, not the lemon juice. The lemon juice is just sour. Now we're gonna add the acid by juicing the lemon. And to balance the acidity, we're going to add some Japanese Marin cooking wine, which is kind of like sherry. It's a sweet wine. And we're gonna add about a tablespoon and then we'll taste as we go and see if it needs more acid or more sweetness. Definitely salt and pepper. It's a special olive oil, a gift from my friend in Tuscany, which I get once a year. And also about a tablespoon or more. And you tell me what it needs, if it needs more acid or more sweet. I think it's perfect. What do you think? Two. We're not using the same spoon, y'all. <laughs> okay. Mmm! It's great! Yum! Okay! We're ready to drop our gnocchi. We're going to have this boiling water. Add some kosher salt. Got to salt your water. We're going to sink to the bottom of the pot. And then in about two minutes, they will rise. And float up to the surface and that's when they're done. So I take it your mother was a good cook? Oh my God, she was unbelievable. She was so, so good. I learned everything I know from her and from my dad. He taught me how to peel and, and cut potatoes and fry potatoes. 
when I was seven years old. <laughs> that was my dad's big accomplishment. It was huge. I'm just chopping some parsley fresh from the garden to top off our mushroom ragu. All right, the gnocchi are floating, which means that it's time to fish them out. So tell me what we're having on our gnocchi. We're having a delicious mushroom medley ragu made of oyster mushrooms and baby bellas and herbs and spices and caramelized onions and other wonderful things. Top it off with our parsley. Seems like I was just here a week ago. <laughs> okay, here you go. To another great meal. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Okay. So hungry. Mm. Should we have started with our salad? We can do. As Italians do, they eat salad at the end of their meal. Mm. Oh, the French do too. Mm. Or we can eat it whenever we like. Yeah. <laughs> and what is this? This stuff? Is that the chickweed? Mm hmm. Wow. I've never had that. It's a weed. Mm. Beneficial weed. You're gonna hate me, but I don't have many weeds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Thanks so much for watching this channel. Please be sure and like the videos and share with your friends. And go to my website and download a free ebook, 10 Steps to a Great First Garden. Thanks so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you enjoyed this video, why not try these?